One of, the one of the priorities that we've been working on for many months now, and we'll continue to work with the legislature when they get back, um, is dealing with the fallout from the reckless border policies of the Biden administration. And so, about five months ago, I was asked by the governor of Texas to send some support uh, because of what was happening at the southern border. You're having 200,000 people illegally enter every month. I mean, that's a medium-sized American city every month coming in illegally. Uh, and so we, we sent folks in state law enforcement, and, and they were there for, for a, a number of uh, probably about six weeks, six, eight weeks total. And they saw these people just pouring in. Many of them said that their ultimate destination was the state of Florida. So it, it, it obviously was affecting us, we could tell right off the bat. But what would happen was they would identify, they would interdict someone coming illegally, turn them over to the feds, and then the feds would just put them on an airplane somewhere, put them on a bus, and then they would end up uh, basically being ferreted around to different communities throughout uh, the country. And we saw that tragically what happened with they're bringing in these flights into Jacksonville in the wee hours of the morning, no advance notice to the state. We don't know, they don't tell us anything. Um, and you had somebody posing as a minor, who's actually about 24 years old, and ended up committing a murder. And again, if the, if the border had been secured and if the policies weren't so reckless, that would not have happened. And we see this time and time again. Uh, and we also understand what's happening in terms of who this is benefiting. The cartels are just eating our lunch with what's going on with these border policies. I mean, they've never had it so good. Uh, you got drugs pouring across, you've got human trafficking coming, uh, and there's obviously some of the people come in will also commit additional crimes, but just with that, the sheer number of people is a huge burden on communities when you talk about health care, schools, all this other stuff. So we filed suit against the Biden administration uh, several months ago about challenging the catch and release policies. That case is still pending in the Northern District of Florida in the Pensacola Division, but I will tell you, already we've seen movement. They filed a motion to dismiss our case, but in the motion they say they have actually changed their policy. What they had been doing when our guys were down there, they'd give them what's called a notice to report. And basically it's like the honor system. Hey, you're here, you're gonna have a hearing, call this number and schedule your hearing You know, on your honor. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if that's how we did law enforcement uh, here in, in, in Florida? Someone robs a bank and they just get a notice, hey, just call the prosecutor and schedule your trial whenever, whenever it makes sense for you. It's an honor system. That doesn't work. So they've acknowledged that they have uh, replaced the notice to appear or the notice to report which is with what's called the notice to appear, which is important because if you don't show up when you have a notice to appear, then immediately you can be sent back without any additional process. Um, and I don't think that would have happened if it wasn't for our efforts on really pushing the envelope on this and fighting back. So we'll see what's going to happen. There's a lot of other things in that case, and they've been able to do some stuff. But at a minimum, yeah, that, that's an important victory. But we realize we've got to do more. And so we're going to be proposing a series of legislative uh, reforms that will help strengthen Florida's hand in fighting back against the Biden border crisis and what we've seen happening for almost the last year uh, it, in terms of what's happening to our country. So we're going to do and we're going to propose a number of things. One, uh, we're going to say to any of these contractors who are involved in ferreting people, whether it's buses, charter planes, what have you, any of those folks who are involved uh, in facilitating this type of illegal migration in the state of Florida, you know, they're going to be barred from doing any business with any state or local government agency in the state of Florida. We just cannot be doing contracts with companies uh, that are knowingly and recklessly facilitating uh, bringing people here into our state illegally. And I think that that will be very, very important. We're also going to require that any private entity that's involved in facilitating illegal migration into Florida uh, owes the state restitution for each person that they're facilitating, whether they're bringing, whether they're, whether they're harboring, uh, because this does cost, when you have huge numbers of people, that costs 
uh, a lot of money for taxpayers in a variety of ways. I mean, just think anytime you have an altercation with law enforcement, you have criminal cases, you have other issues with drugs, you have just normal things about health care and things that, that, that fall under the taxpayer. So every single person will be charged, the, the entities will have to provide restitution for the state of Florida. Number three, we're also going to strengthen our sanctuary cities law. We're going to make sure that if a local jurisdiction is not assisting state law enforcement in our investigation on whether somebody uh, has been brought here illegally, that that constitutes a sanctuary policy. And that's a, that makes sense. Now before, when we did the sanctuary cities bill, we were dealing with the prospect of the federal government helping us uh, for example, when Trump was president, you had a criminal alien in a Florida state penitentiary. They served their sentence. ICE would pick him up, and then they'd send him back. If Biden doesn't. They don't really do that. I mean, sometimes they'll do it now because there's been some pressure, but a lot of times they will release these people. That was not happening pre previously. Now we're in a different situation where we need all entities in Florida uh, helping to fight back against the federal government's uh, ineptitude and inaction. So that'll be important to strengthen. We're also going to strengthen E-Verify enforcement by adding Department of Economic Opportunity as an agency eligible to conduct enforcement. We're going to provide resources. Resources. We're going to provide money uh, to be able to do it. What we don't want is incentivizing uh, people uh, to be coming uh, to the state uh, illegally. And we also, in yesterday's budget, I put in $8 million uh, for us to be able to transport people illegally out of the state of Florida. Now, we had mentioned, and I said, you know, it's somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but it is true. If you sent to Delaware or Martha's Vineyard or some of these places, that border would be secure the next day. That border would be secure. Um, but instead, they're, they're imposing the results of their policies um, on states like Florida, who they love to hate or whatever. Uh, so, but we are going to provide that uh, opportunity, and I think that that could potentially make a, a difference. Uh, we want to know if somebody is committing criminal activity, if they're arrested or certainly if they're convicted, you know, we want to know uh, whether they are here illegally. That matters. That, that matters for uh, adjudicating these policies. It matters for the costs that are imposed on our, on our state. Uh, we are going to have this, the sheriffs participate in the 287G program. They, most of them do in the state of Florida, but not all of them do. But it's really, really important uh, that we're all on the same page on this. Um, we're also going to make sure that when people are convicted, that this is uh, reflected on their, on their court records, uh, whether they are here in the country illegally. And this is going to be reported to FDLE, and it's going to be put on a public website. This way people can know, because I, look, these guys work hard, Mike, and these other folks throughout the, the Florida. They work really hard uh, to keep the community safe. There's obviously challenges that you have to deal with. But if someone's coming illegally and then they do commit a, a, a serious criminal offense, that would not have happened had they just enforced the law and secured the border. And so it's important to know how many of these crimes are, are easily preventable just by having enforcement of the law. So we're going to know that. Uh, also going to make sure that there's no taxpayer benefits that are provided to anyone uh, coming illegally, particularly facilitating any of the things that we're seeing from the southern border. Uh, and that'll be uh, verification uh, will be done by state agencies and make sure that's basically already the law. But we want to make sure that we're uh, checking all the boxes on that. Um, and then finally, uh, they issued today uh, a new emergency rule about the illegal minors that are coming and they're being sent to these places and the problem is is that it's much more lucrative to take foreigners into these places than it is to help our own kids here in florida for example it's 158 dollars uh, for a foster kid but it's 500 to 1400 if someone's illegally here from a foreign country and we want to make sure that those licenses are going to facilities that are helping people in florida who need the help